All right, what's up everyone? Welcome to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel. Today I'm gonna to be going over Google Ads forecasting and budgeting, and I'm also gonna share a budgeting spreadsheet with you. So when it comes to forecasting, there's two different ways you can do it. You can do it using the Keyword Planner and building a plan in here. Otherwise, what you can do if you have an active campaign is you can use the Performance Planner. I'm gonna create a completely separate video about the Performance Planner. It's a pretty new tool from Google Ads. So you can see right here, they have new to Performance Planner, see highlights. So essentially what you do is you create a plan and they're gonna help you use forecasts to optimize your budget for future performance targets. So it helps you forecast your campaign and see how well a new campaign will perform depending on the plan that you use. So I'm not gonna be going over the Performance Planner here, so we're gonna be coming back over to the Keyword Planner. So what I wanna do is I wanna click on discover new keywords and let's just say for example, I wanna create new campaign for my website, beachfrontdecor.com. I'm gonna start with keywords here and we're just gonna come in. I'm just gonna enter 10 keywords. Okay, so I entered 10 keywords here. So this is the most that you can enter at this time when you start with keywords. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna scroll down and click on get results. So you can enter a domain to use as a filter if you want. You can start with a website as well, but with a website, you're not gonna be able to use the grouped ideas that I use in the next step. So I'm gonna click on get results now. Okay, so it's gonna pull up the top keywords by relevance. So you can see beach decor, beach doormat, beach area rugs, bedding. These are the ones that I entered. If I keep scrolling down, you're gonna see there's more keywords down here as well. So basically what we need to do is build a plan. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here to grouped ideas. So in grouped ideas, what they're gonna do is they're gonna create a group by relevance. So these are ad group examples. So different things that you can use as you're building your campaign. So let's just say I wanna target wedding decor, so beach wedding decorations. I wanna target all of these different keywords here. So we'll start there. You have coastal Christmas decorations. So let's say I wanna target that as well as we get closer and closer to Christmas. I wanna make sure that I'm targeting these keywords. Coastal throw pillows, so we'll say I'll target that as well. So what you would do is you would add as many ad groups as possible that would be relevant for your campaign. As long as you have landing pages for these different ad groups, you should add them to a campaign. So you can see right here, I have add to plan. So it's gonna say adding to three ad groups. So what that means is it's in my plan, it's gonna create three different ad groups for each of these grouped ideas below. Okay, so next is match type. They have broad match, phrase match, and exact match. I generally use phrase match here because I think that's gonna help match a lot of different keywords, match a lot of different search terms that people type in, but it's not gonna be too broad. It's not gonna be too exact. I think it gives me the most accurate forecast data. So I'm gonna use phrase match for this, even though I don't really target phrase match keywords in my campaigns. I think it's the best to use for forecast data just based on the types of things that people are gonna type in because people aren't always gonna type in these exact match keywords and I find broad match to just be too broad. So rather than just adding these three ad groups right now, I'm gonna create a few more ad groups here just by clicking on these keywords and we're gonna keep scrolling down so you can see accent chair, so we'll do that one as well. Beach bathroom accessory sets, we'll do that. Beach house signs, coastal end tables. Okay, so at this time we have 182 keywords selected. We're adding it to our plan. We're adding 25 total ad groups. Every keyword is gonna be a phrase match keyword. So all we need to do is click add keywords and it's gonna start building our plan here. Now you can keep building your plan if you wanna go back into keyword ideas. If you wanna make sure that your ad groups look good with all the keywords that are in there, I can add more grouped ideas here as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna come over here to plan overview and plan overview is gonna allow you to forecast your data. So the other thing you can do is click on ad groups here. It's gonna show all the different ad groups, it's gonna show the max cost per click and how much they expect you to get from each individual ad group here. So usually things with more search volume, so let's just go by impressions. So beach house signs, coastal throw pillows, beach themed area rugs. So they're basically saying these have more search volume than some of these other ones down at the bottom. And maybe they have a little bit less competition because as you increase your max cost per click for a certain ad group, it's gonna increase the impressions, clicks, the cost, and the average cost per click for that ad group as well. So different ways to kind of look at the types of keywords that you're targeting by ad group. You can also do keywords and locations, but what I'm gonna do is click on plan overview here, and you're gonna see it's gonna show what they expect our top keywords to be, what they expect our top locations to be by top states and by cost percentage. So we'll keep scrolling. You can see devices here as well, mobile phones, tablets, computers. Okay, so one thing we can do is add conversion metrics here. So let's just say I use my site-wide conversion rate and my site-wide value per conversion. So let's just say my site-wide conversion rate is 4%. So every time 100 people visit my website, 4% of people actually convert. And let's say my average value per conversion is $75, for example. Now we'll click on save. You can also reset to your account's historical conversion rate and value. So you can use that as well. 
So what I'm going to do is just use this. You can get these this data from your Google Analytics account. So just go to the conversions tab, open it and look at your conversion rate, look at your value per conversion and we'll click on save here. Now what we want to do is click on this drop down here. So I like to use this graph right here. So you can see if you want to look at things like conversions, average cost per acquisition, conversion value, return on ad spend, clicks, impressions, and cost. So let's just go to cost real quick. And let's just say we're going to look at a max cost per click of here we go, $2.70. So essentially what that's saying is it will cost $1.2,000 for the month, so a daily budget of $43. It would give us 30 conversions, an average cost per acquisition of $40. So if our value per conversion is $75, then this would be a pretty good campaign overall. So you can look at some different data here. It's gonna say our click-through rate will be 5.3%, 740 clicks, impressions 14,000. So the other thing you can do is look at return on ad spend. So let's just say, for example, we want to maximize return on ad spend. So you would kind of come over here and let's just say costs would be around $400, $420 here. Our return on ad spend would be about 350%. So it's going to say our average cost per acquisition would be $22, value per conversion $75, conversion value about $1,500 with a spend of $430. So you can also just say, I want to get my return on ad spend, let's just say to 1.5. So it's not even going to show over here because we don't have enough volume. So let's just say our return on ad spend would be 160%. Average cost per acquisition, $47. We would spend about $1.5,000, daily budget of $52. So it's a really great way to forecast your data using this tool here. Basically what you do is you build a plan using the Google Keyword Planner. You just come into Plan Overview, and then you're just gonna click this little arrow, and you can look at everything right here. By clicking on this arrow dropdown, it's gonna show your top keywords. So coastal floor lamps, beach themed area rugs, throw pillows, nautical throw pillows. And again, you have more location and device data down here as well. The last thing I want to go through here is conversion value. So in conversion value, what you can kind of see is your conversion value will go up and down and it'll eventually reach a peak depending on the types of keywords that you enter. And again, the more data that you enter into your plan, the more keywords that you have, the more ad groups that you build, the better this forecast will be. And we can keep going down here a little bit. So it's going to show that maybe our best results will be somewhere in this line right here where we're not spending that much. We're not spending, you know, $1.5,000. But maybe we come down here, we're spending about $700. Our conversion value would be $1.9,000. So it would be 25 total conversions we can drive for a total cost of $730. So this would be good results. I would probably build a campaign and I would look to start my budget somewhere between maybe $500 up to $1,000. And then you can always increase it over time. You can keep adding keywords. So this is how to forecast data. It's a really simple process. It's looking at a forecast for August 1st to 31st. Search network is Google. Language, all languages. You can update locations if you want. So if you're going to be targeting more than the United States, you can do that as well. So this is a really great way. And then if we click on keywords just one more time, I want to go through this real quick. It'll show some of the top keywords here. And if we go by clicks, impressions. So we'll just go by cost, actually. So it's going to say our top keywords by cost will be coastal throw pillows, beach house signs, nautical throw pillows, beach wine glasses, beach house rugs. So a lot of different keywords here, and it will give you an idea of what you're going to be spending your budget on. So the more keywords that you add here, the more ad groups that you create in your plan, the better your forecast data will be. So now last but not least, I want to go through budgeting, and I want to share with you a free budgeting Google Sheet that I'm going to put in the video description for this URL. Also leave it as the top comment on this video so you can easily find it, download it, and use it yourself. So with budgeting, so as you're running a campaign, this is the type of budgeting spreadsheet that I use, and I update it daily. So what I'll do is you can see I have my Google Ads search campaign. It's a Google Ads budgeting example for clientexample.com. Down here, so this is the main thing, it's gonna say budget, so total budget for the month, budget per day. So you're gonna take the budget divided by the amount of days in that month, so for July. Total spend so far, so this is, I'll show you this in a minute. Days left, so 11 days left in the month. Budget remaining per day, $33.91. So clicks, this is gonna be total results, clicks, cost per click, conversions, cost per conversion, conversion rate, revenue, and return on ad spend. So you kind of keep track of everything that's going on in your accounts. And you can do the same thing for Bing ads. You can do the same thing for Facebook ads. If you're running a Google ads search campaign, 
and a Google Ads display campaign, maybe a Google Ads shopping campaign. You can look at all of those as well and look at spend, clicks, conversions, revenue, see how the campaign is performing over the course of the month, see how your budget is pacing. So now what I'll do is I'll look at each individual day. So I have day one, day two, day three. Generally, you can put the actual dates here. So July 1st, July 2nd, July 3rd, July 4th. And then what I'll do is I'll take the previous day's worth of data and put it right in here. So today is July 21st. So I actually need to do July 20th. So I'm going to take this data right here. We're just going to get rid of it for right now. And then what I would do is I would open up my campaign. So you can see I have my campaign open here. So I'm just looking at a search campaign. And let's just say, for example, I have 27 clicks from yesterday, 1886. So I'll just come over here. So I spent $18.86, drove 27 clicks, and then we'll come back over, keep looking. So we drove one conversion, and the conversion value is $49.95. So we're going to come over here again to budgeting. One conversion, conversion value was $49.95. Click on Enter. So now we'll update this over to the left-hand side. So you can see our data might have changed a little bit but it's showing my budget remaining per day is $34. So you would wanna make sure that your campaign is pacing correctly for the month. Now really what I would do is if, if I know that I have a $1,000 monthly budget, then I'd probably set my budget at around $33 per day because then I'd spend around $999 for the month. So that's really how I would do it. Make sure you're spending it and pacing it correctly. This is just sample data. It's not data from the actual campaign, but it's a great way to look at your performance over the course of the month and then just by updating each day so if you're running a google ads campaign a facebook ads campaign if you're running multiple campaigns for the same client and you have multiple clients that you're managing it's a great way to look at how things are pacing how the previous day went i usually start my morning doing this so you wake up you enter the spend for each client the clicks the conversions the overall conversion value that drove so you don't need to worry about it too much on a daily basis, but as you start doing it on a weekly basis, so you look at day one to day seven, see how the campaign is pacing for the month, look at day eight to day 14. So you can kind of look at all this data over the course of the month, and I like to just update it every single day. And then you're able to see how your budget is pacing, how many clicks you're driving, how many conversions you're driving, what your return on ad spend is over the course of the month. If things aren't performing well over the course of the month, then you know that you need to update and optimize your campaign. So this is a budgeting spreadsheet. It's a pretty simple one. There's different ways that you can build one, but th this is what the one that I generally use is I'll just take each individual day. I'll use a table over here to the left-hand side that will update as you change this data over here. So let's just say I change spend one day for day three. Let's just say I update it to $20. You're going to see things are going to change over to the left-hand side. If I take conversions for another day, you can do that as well. And then with revenue, you just want to keep track of your revenue as well. So this is how I do budgeting. I do forecasting by using the Google Keyword Planner. I will go through the performance planner separately if you're interested in learning more about that. But it's a pretty simple way to do Google Ads forecasting and budgeting. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks for watching my video today. And make sure you subscribe to the Surfside PPC YouTube channel.